Oh, man. Guys, I got some really bad news about 8-Ball. Remember the other day when Tyler came up to pick up 8-Ball to put the traction bars on and we were talking about how grateful we are that we have this YouTube channel and the epic diesel community here in Lancaster? Well, just following that, actually the next day, I got a call from Tyler. I was expecting that he was gonna be dropping the truck off just making sure that I was here, whatever the case is, so he could catch up on some projects. But he didn't call me with any good news. Rather, he called me with some bad news and it's the fact that 8-Ball is very injured. As a matter of fact, um, so injured that he couldn't move under his own power. And today we're gonna to figure out what that's all about. Ah, so what's going on guys? Welcome back to The Drive-By. Welcome back to another vlog. Thanks for tuning in. As always, if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider doing so. It's great having you along. We got some crazy good hoodie weather going on and some fresh garments. I'm feeling absolutely fantastic today and I'm really excited about making this video, but I'm also kind of a little anxious about what it is that 8-Ball's actually got going on. We're gonna figure that out in a little bit. Just wanted to remind you guys that the deadline for Dream Music Giveaway number 20, AKA Convict and 30 Grand, and boosted the rip supercharged jlu ends october 24th so procrastination nation i've said it a few times in the past i'm gonna say it now and i'm gonna say it on sunday but that'll be the last time for you to grab your entries for both giveaways there will be two winners as a result of this and thanks for getting us to 20 giveaways and the question is will one of two be you and only time will tell we're gonna get a lot of shop updates here over the next few weeks. Literally in the next three weeks, you guys should see my scheduler. It is completely booked. Starting this upcoming Wednesday, we've got electric running in, then we've got insulation, then we've got drywall for the recreation space, then we've got the concrete pour. We're gonna have all of our lighting ran and hopefully hooked up to my transformer over there. We're still waiting on our garage doors and our man doors. We're getting softening done and things are coming together. The goal is to have the building completely done by the first week in November. We're gonna see if we can stick to that timeline, but everything is looking good and I see a light at the end of the tunnel finally and before we go any further guys I just wanted to recap for diesels and donuts which was last Sunday I gotta thank everyone that came out the snowmobiles dusted off for the season and then we've got the peach bottom gooseneck rig coming by all these duramaxes had all their work done by peach bottom and here they are in three two one one and two and those are my old wheels they came off my 2020 as a matter of fact sorry i didn't get over to see you guys but uh i know you're around and we'll catch up some other time another familiar truck is a result of peach bottom and another familiar uh, truck is a result of peach bottom all right, guys, so I really haven't made much video content here today. Luckily, I've got Casey Sue is who, who's been covering the event. It's been absolutely incredible. We're just nearing kind of the tail end. This parking lot was completely full, but you know what? At these events, I really love to try and take as much time to just have conversations with all the enthusiasts that come out. It's so meaningful that I appreciate it more than anything in the entire world. And honestly, you guys are investing in me, so I want to invest in you as much as I possibly can. Now, the parking lot has kind of cleared out. There's a lot of super clean rigs here. Where's your truck at? Grab it a picture real quick. All right, guys, thanks again. All right, now I'm running over here for a little while. We've got some really cool rat rods out. I appreciate you guys coming out to the show. And like I mentioned, yeah, you're gonna be on YouTube, yeah! <laughs> it is just so electric with energy here, guys. It's absolutely awesome. And you know, it's such a bittersweet thing because truthfully, I'd love to sit and chat with every single one of you. What's going on, guys? Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. You guys invest in me three times a week, and genuinely, it's my opportunity when we put these events on to invest back in all of you, and I try my absolute best to do that. Now, I'm venturing on over to a big rig corner. We've got some really nice Peterbilts that came out today, and well, being that your boy's got a CDL now, we've taken on a fond appreciation for some big rigs, and these are some really nice trucks. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Look at the color match on these beauties. 
What's going on, man? How you doing? It's guys? great to have you on the vlog. Thanks yeah. for coming out, Thanks. dude. Thanks I appreciate for it us. tremendously. We've got Bel Air Peterbilt on Instagram here. And, and Truck and Life on YouTube. And Truck and Life on YouTube. We've got yeah. a fellow brethren content creator, and he's got a really nice taste for big trucks. Yes. Dude, this thing is rad. Climb up in. Ah. My pleasure, look say out, no look more. Out, look, out over the look, look at the view on the inside of this thing. What's the exterior color on this thing? Tropical turquoise, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're, Whoa, you're, one, you're one of few people that's as tall as me that sat there and... So you, you sit at this height? Yeah, that's Driving right. it every day? Yeah, that's where I drive. Is this an air seat? Yes. It does go up? Yes. For the uh, gravitationally challenged? Yes. <laughs> that's, nice. That's all you get. That's Dude. You get. All right, so this is a little bit better. We've got that long nose peat on this 379. What do we got power in this thing? 600 Cummins. With 600 Cummins. Signature 600. Yeah. Signature 600, shifting through. 18. And 18 eat. Yeah. All right. And 336 rears. Oh, good, she, man. She's got long legs. She she stretches them out and probably cruises real nice. Yes. I'd imagine. Yeah. At about 72, we're doing about 1,400 RPM. All right. That's what we like because at the end of the day, when you're trucking, you need that fuel economy because that's your bottom line. This thing's set up beautifully, man. Thanks. Being that you spend so much time in here, you obviously want to configure it to something that you enjoy as you're home away from home. Right. And you're moving America, bro. I mean, that's what I appreciate so much about all of our truckers that are out in the audience. I know you guys are out there and I appreciate you guys tremendously because at the end of the day, you guys are literally moving America. Let's just take a minute to appreciate this thing. I like the real tall shifters, but I'd prefer something shorter. This one right here. This is actually realistic. Yes, that's actually made by Twisted Shifters and it is a 31 inch shifter. So that's spot on. I see the guys with the real big ape hanger. Yeah. I think they're cool, yeah. but I like also feeling blood flow in my arm. Yes. 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 And and uh, no chattering coming out of the shifter. And that is important because you don't want to listen to that in your right ear the entire right. time you're cruising. Right. What? what? I can't hear you. What did you say? What? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Clear it out. Clear it out. Nicely done, dude. You've got an awesome attention to detail. And I see these big rigs that are done just like this. And man, it's awesome. Eight inch stacks? Sevens. Seven. They're yeah. perfect. Yeah. Not too big, not too small. Yeah. <laughs> incredible oh my god we've got a random show up here whoever it is that you are thank you for adding some support to the big rig show over here man two beautiful trucks lined up you can't complain not at all dude. not at all wow so we've got beautiful teal and then we've got crazy cool tan and brown what an amazing combination and so clean you know it's a feat to maintain a truck like this when they're literally workhorses that's what they're intended to do I give these guys tremendous amounts of credit. We've got Longhorn, Longhorn Trucking LLC here. Wow, dude, these are absolutely epic. Also some really nice seven inch stacks. He's got some heat guards on the side here. It almost looks like somewhat of a flat top. Big, big sleepers on both of these things. Obviously want to be comfortable. Wow, we've got color match block. Peterbilt with the stretched rear end. I love just the small LED lights. Nothing too crazy in the front or the back. And we've got some really tasteful truckers right here, man. I am all about it. As I had said, I'm reaching out to all my CDO drivers. We're trying to find ourselves a truck. We've got a specific thing in mind. I obviously don't want to pay too much. The market's a little crazy right now. I'm preferring to get like a 379. Maybe we find ourselves a nice tractor like this that's outfitted with a PTO. Then we try and get like a 3406B, maybe C12, 13, 15, maybe a 6NZ. I know they're pretty desirable. I'd like to be in that like 30 ballpark. I want to get something with potential that's not done because we need to do a lot to get it to where I actually want to go. Am I doing a pop cap on the Duramax? I don't know. This thing looks absolutely incredible, dude. You got a hood stack on an L5P? Let's see it. Yo, thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Job, you too. Man. This thing is clean. Thank you. I support 100% of every decision you made up until this point in time. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Where'd you guys come out from? Uh, Lewistown. Lewistown. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was good seeing this thing, man. The stance is perfect. Half cap's awesome. I've been thinking about doing one on Misfit for a while. Maybe going into the winter time. Cole. Was that oh, by yeah. Cole? Oh, yeah. He's the man. Yeah. And his work is just on point. Phenomenal. Good meeting you guys. I hope yeah, to see you all around sometime. Yeah. See you guys. Dude, that thing is stupid clean. I love the pap cap. I don't know, Brendan, what are you thinking, buddy? It's pretty think we should do one on the AT4 and Misfit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you think so? Now, Brendan, everyone's been curious. How's Blackjack treating you, buddy? Pretty good. Yeah, you've been loving yeah. it? Oh, I love it. Dude, it's awesome to see it out. You've got to hang out right here next to what was the tent. You made some changes. And that's pretty much it, really. It's clean, bro. And it's awesome to just see you kind of took the truck as what we gave it to you as and then made it your own, bro. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Love it. The only manual giveaway. That's it, man. Holding it down. Guys, do we do another manual truck? Fourth gen would be our limited generation on Cummins because they actually discontinued the oh so iconic G56 in 2018. Very sad, man. Very sad. G56 is so fun to drive. And that's a wrap as we roll out in Convict. That was an incredible turnout. Thank you to the four or 500 plus people that made attendance today. We had people all the way from like the New York Canadian border all the way down to the Carolinas and everything else in between. It was absolutely awesome. We got rid of all of our coffee and all of our donuts. 100% of those proceeds are gonna be going over to the Lower Paxton Police Department as our small means of saying thank you to all those that backed the blue. Enthusiasts will also be making a donation to Lower Paxton as a means of saying thank you to all the enthusiasts and the support that they show. I don't advertise that the business makes donations often. Really, I just think it's the right thing to do morally when you're a business owner, but I figured I'd mention it this time around because we're just super grateful. Everyone was on their best behavior, which I greatly appreciate as well. All your favorite are now in my mind as I look at this camera and make my YouTube videos. I also gotta say I'm extremely humbled following any time that we put on an event because a lot of you say that I'm inspiration for you and you know what guys sometimes I don't feel like I really deserve that but I'm very grateful for it and I'm extremely humbled to say the least. I use this platform not for clout, not for getting famous. If anything I just want to use it as a means to connect with like-minded people and the coolest part about it is it works really really well. So we got the squad here we're in Convict. We got Casey behind me in the giveaway Jeep behind that is misfit behind that is the r8 and we are rolling squad deep it's just that we're missing two the 2022 high country and eight ball you guys remember when tyler picked up eight ball the other day to put some traction bars on well he was on his way home and something not so good happened now we're hopeful that we can do more events just like that it's a little up in the air because winter is upon us if we get the chance we will but what we certainly have to do is a show and go down at cecil county or at some local race events so that way people can come out and hang out people can come out and race so we get the best of both worlds 100 bucks just like that to those diesel truck owners out in the audience, do you guys ever notice how some of the smallest gas stations have diesel? It really doesn't make any sense. It's like unnavigable for anything that's bigger than a pickup truck. And what I find is most of the fuel stations around me in Lancaster here are that way, they're tiny. It's almost like confusing when you have a big trailer on the back like when I had my PJ, because it'd be impossible to navigate to get fuel. You'd have to go out of your way just to fuel up to get to where you're going. Does anybody else run into that or is it just me? Welcome back to Next Level Motorworks where we're getting off of a vibe to see a vibe. Eight Ball's up on a trailer and he hasn't moved since the heartbreak occurred. Oh my God. I don't even know what we're about to get into here. We've got transmission related problems. I'm going to get into it in a minute just because I'm super distracted by what is a very clean fourth gen mega cab Cummins on some awesome directional morph 24 by 12s wrapped in a 305 35 24. Lots of you guys ask me questions about what wheel and tire setup you should do to achieve that OEM plus look. And there's typically two routes that I'll go. It's a 24 by 12 with a 33 equivalent 305, whatever the case might be. Or if you wanna go a little wider for some stance, it's a 22 or a 24 by 14, some 355s, some 33s, whatever the case might be. That way you don't have to lift up the truck too much. You can still maintain all the benefits of your functionality and drivability with the added benefit of the aggressive nature of the look. But I'll tell you what, whoever's truck this is, it looks really good. Mega cab with the storage boxes in the rear. We haven't done a mega cab 
ever in the history of this YouTube channel. We've done a few really clean fourth gens and fifth gens, but I've been looking lately, guys. I'm gonna see if I can try and find ourselves a nice coming. If you guys are up for that, you gotta smash the like button on this video. Let's get it up to a goal. We've been averaging like two to 5,000 likes per video. If we get this video right now to 7,500 likes, which shouldn't be a problem by any means, that's easy for you guys. It's just y'all forget to like the videos from time to time. We are going to be adding a Cummins to the channel next. That's my promise to you. And I figured it'd be a good time to mention it, not only because we're surrounded by Dodges today, but because we're making an eight ball update. This video is kind of ironic because eight balls kind of been just chilling in the background since it absolutely whooped up on Gabe Farrell. Your truck did a wheelie, by the way. <laughs> That kid thought his freaking Cummins was fast, and then he sold it right after he raced this. Gabe, I'm just kidding, buddy, but but seriously, you know that that hurt a lot. It's okay, though. You were gonna learn anyway. And then we decided to bring it over to Tyler so he could put the traction bars on, and put the traction bars on, he did. We've had these Whirly Fab traction bars sitting over at the shop for no joke, more than eight months, but we've just been consumed by all the projects that we've got going on, and finally they're installed. They look absolutely incredible, Tyler. Great job with the welds in the front and the rear. The rear brass Brackets are not bolt-on because the U-bolts are upside down on Dodges. Rather, they are actually weld-on style brackets. They're looking super good. Match the exterior of the truck great. Tyler and Tyler over here at Next Level were literally going to bring the truck back to me, which I really appreciate. And then I got a call from Tyler. He said, hey, I'm halfway back to your place, but we're stranded on the side of the road right now. Your truck's locked out in neutral. It won't go into drive, won't go into reverse, won't go into any gears. And I said, well, uh-oh, that's not good. He said, so do you want me to bring it back to your place? I said, absolutely not. Bring it back to your shop because it's going to do nothing here. And this is where we're at. So let's go inside and get the scoop, and then maybe we're going to give Firepunk a call to see what they suggest and recommend and we'll come up with a game plan morning buddy Good morning i heard you had a long weekend yes very long tyler was in here working on one of my buddy becker's trucks he's got an lml that has a stealth 64 in it and tyler you were up like wee hours of the night said it's running great yeah oh yeah, yeah. Running good again. so what happened bro so we we're just taking it back we put the traction bars on we were driving it back and it seemed to just it just went into all neutrals <laughs> every gear has a neutral yeah <laughs> no Tyler, why were you doing burnouts in my truck on the way back? Oh, Come on, bro. Everybody sees your deniability. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding with you, Tyler. I know you weren't. They were saying, so I reached out to Andy Robb. You guys, if you don't remember who that is, he works over at Firepunk. He had that compound turbo fifth gen that we reviewed. You guys got that video up to like 400,000 views. And he goes, yeah, it might be one of your shafts. So like your input, your intermediate, or your output shaft. We did a massive upgrade on the input shaft. It's a 35 spline, super thick boy. But he was like, look, typically they don't break in the moment. It's just compounded effect of using it over yeah, long, time. Long-term fatigue. And used it, I think and I heavy, have. And a heavy, heavy foot. Heavy foot, doing wheelies, does that qualify? Probably. Maybe it was just Probably. that, maybe the trans was just like, dude, Gabe, we felt so bad we whooped up on him that like we have to give you a little bit of yeah, reason. A little bit of credit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's what happened probably. Gabe, at least my trans had you in mind, buddy. So we're actually gonna give Andy Robbie a call from Firepunk now. We're gonna get his expert opinion on what's going on and try and decide what our next move is. In the meantime though, DDG number one, Drew Smith, this truck's been chilling up here. Tyler's been working on it intermittently. I love the plate on it, dude. It gets me every time. But somehow that 156,000 mile motor is just taking everything that we've thrown I at think it. No problem. I think it'll go for a while. That's what I'm that's hoping a, for. And, and Knock on wood. Well, maybe if something uh, goes at the track, that's where I think you're going to have problems. You're saying Uncle Rodney's going to become an astronaut at the track? At the tone. Oh my God, Andy, you blew oh. us off on the vlog, bro. Tyler just put on this morning the new style steering stuff. Yeah. Cause this is this that like the fourth gen style stuff? Yeah. So this style is like it style. walks so bad, I know. dude. So I this, mean, the, the thousand horsepower boost. The, this style, out. this old style, this wheel and that wheel to keep them going straight. There's a joint there between yep. them. Yeah. So and then that makes it they really want to you know fight each other. Sure. Where the new style, there's this rod goes straight across over to the other wheel, and then this tie rod t connects to in between them. So it's a yeah. T style where this is like a Y. Um, yeah, it balances it out a little bit better. Yeah, that Plus right. Plus that, that, that steering stabilizer is so clapped. It's ridiculous. Yeah, well that right outer tie rod, that one has a lot of play in it. <laughs> the right inner one has a lot of play. This one has a lot of play in it. None of this is surprising yeah, to me. Yeah, they're pretty much all, they're all shot. So I was gonna recommend getting that new style steering. So at least you have a straight across beam. That'll really help, I think, with keeping the tires from wanting to bow in. Yeah, let's do it. And and, and launching then, as hard as we have with yeah, forces yeah, also doesn't say. help at all. Um, and then the other thing I was gonna say is we could put a redhead steering box. And then the because those are is it leaking? 
Yeah, it's leaking. <laughs> the red head steering box, I think, would really help. It'll really tighten up your steering, and then also do the that. do the brace that goes the across. Because you did the brace on Bro on um, Joey's. Yeah. And it, his is actually pretty snug and pretty. This thing's like really sloppy. We're getting a phone call back. What's up, dude? Well, good morning, sir. How are you doing? Beautiful. I'm good. How are you? I missed you, man. It's been a minute. Well. I know, I miss you too. I don't like it when you call me on these turns. Well, it's all good. You know they say bad things pull people together, I guess, so... Bro, I'm here with Tyler uh, from Next Level. The truck's sitting over here now, and he was kind of just walking me through what happened. Literally, dude, he was just driving, and the, the trans found neutral in every gear. Oh, dang. Yeah, he was probably out doing rolling burnouts. He's just, he's got a really good <laughs> poker face, so... <laughs> I feeling when people drive your truck and break the trains, right? <laughs> Yo, is that, that's karma, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Two and a half years later. Right. So what do you think, man? What do, you, what do you think it could be? I mean, we're gonna probably end up... I want to get out there in the worst way, but my schedule is crazy, especially with the holidays yeah, coming up. So I'll get a rain check on that lunch date. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not nice to the truck. I've definitely been using it a lot, and all the boosted launches that I've done with full weight wheels and tires obviously doesn't help. Oh, we've been waiting for five months for them, and we, oh my just, God. we were supposed to get them in November, and now we are, we threw a grapevine herd till, like, maybe not till June of next year. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, yeah. man. That is wild. So what? Yeah, what's the alternative, Andy? Do we go back to a stock one? No, <laughs> uh, you do have a, the option to go to it. That way, at least the uh, truck's what? not sitting for six months. Well, ironically, I was planning on doing a, quote, refresh to eight ball this winter anyway. It just didn't really entail a transmission-related refresh hey man i mean the trans held up great for what i put it through i wasn't nice to it by any yeah. means <laughs> so like that new shop that you're building it'll look real nice in there <laughs> yeah right occupying the lift that i've got for the next six months i appreciate your time yo yeah, tell everybody too. over there we said what's up i will for sure man all right dude i'll talk to you later yeah. so that was andy over at firepunk guys and we basically have our game plan right now it's all up in the air we're speculating it's one of the primary drives or shafts that go through the transmission it could be the hub on the back where the trans actually isn't just spinning to the drive shaft um, it could be a broken input, which is the front shaft, intermediate, which is in the center where all the clutches ride, or it could be the output, anything along that drive or train. Or in the transfer case. Or in the transfer case, something in the transfer case. Output. That wouldn't be all that bad. If it was in the transfer case, like the transfer case like sh in shaft was yeah. like broken, that'd be like perfect. So guys, the question is, I was trying to do a refresh on April this winter, and I wanted to like <laughs> I got a <laughs> Poor April. All right, well, that's 8-Ball. There's the update. She's Fun broken, time. really broken. That's what happens when you beat on it. That's what happens when you build something to be purpose-built. Things break, the and then you make them better. Nice, though. I know, I was talking about that earlier, dude. They look really good. <laughs> the yeah. irony in that, though, is that if I had traction bars on earlier, there's a likelihood that we would have reduced... The amount of fatigue. Fatigue on that whole trans. Yeah. It's just, I have a heavy foot and no patience, and yeah, I mean, this is the result. <laughs> Tyler said when he drove it, the thing hooked. He's, he's like, this thing hooks. I mean, it's the first time for him driving it. Did it really hook? He's like, it hooked. He's like, I don't know if those traction bars made a difference, but he's like, oh, it's just like, God. it hooks really good. Bro, there's never been an instance where I've driven a truck and like, I feel the axle moving behind me. Yeah. I mean, it's sketchy. And then you start doing a roll and burn out at like 60 and it's like, it goes and it's like, bah, 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 you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's there's really that, not good. This road down here by the church. And I was bringing it over. I got on it, and it, the back, back tires broke loose for like a second. And I was like, God damn. Yeah, this, this thing's thing, an like, animal. Yeah. Like, it cooks them. <laughs> Eight ball is an animal, to say the least. Little farm truck that could. So, Tyler's super busy. We're not going to be getting the eight ball diagnostics today, but I will keep you guys posted about what it is that we end up figuring out with that thing. And if any of our speculation is in fact correct, or if it's something minor, you got to realize there's always that possibility as well. We just don't completely know until we have that trans drop. That will most certainly be a video coming in the future, so if you're not subscribed, you might want to consider doing so. Supra! I feel the need to do that. Every time I see an MK4, it's just like natural. I don't know how I feel about the MK5s, although it definitely does resemble more of a Supra with the high spoiler in the rear Supra-esque MK4. What do you guys think about those new Supras? Ah, it'll just never live up to the legacy in the iconic MK4. I'm sorry. BMW really should have never taken that project down. All right, guys, so we're back at the house now. I've got a quick question for y'all about the R8 and a decal placement. I haven't made up my mind. I wanna put an enthusiast decal on it like I had on the vet, but I'm not sure where to put the decal or decals. I want it to be clean. I think it'll look good, 
one right in the back, but then it would kind of cover up the V10 FSI. So I was thinking about doing our reflective decal right here on the side of the car. What do you guys think? Should we do the side on both sides, passenger and driver, or one top dead center on the rear of the glass? Maybe top dead center or bottom dead center? I'm thinking on the doors would be more preferential, but I haven't quite decided yet. Got the decals. I just don't know where to put them. So we're back up at the house now. Tyler is gonna begin working on eight ball later, like I had mentioned, so we're gonna film that in a later video. I'm not at all surprised about eight ball, honestly. I've used the crap out of that truck. And other than that, it kind of just sits and hangs out. And truthfully, I'm completely at ease with it. I built that truck for one purpose, and that was to have a hell of a lot of fun with it. And fun we do, but when we have fun, things break. That's just the name of the game. Man, walking into the shop, the lighting gets really bad. Then if I turn around, it's good. Fortunately, fire up old Betsy here. Ugh. It's starting to get cold out. Gotta cycle the glow plugs. All right. Gonna let that thing warm up. Fortunately, the lighting situation is gonna be corrected by 420,000 lumens that we're gonna have scattered all throughout the ceiling. We've got our electrician actually coming in two days, so this whole place is about to get some power, which is pretty exciting. And then, as I mentioned, we've got kind of a, a very, very consistent schedule of people that are gonna be coming in just to finish things up. So that brings us to the topic of radiant floor. I actually decided to opt out of it after a bunch of back and forth. I'm talking about the most state of undecided I've ever been in in my entire life I actually opted out of radiant floor I'm all about spending money where it makes sense and truthfully radiant floor yes I, I I see the benefits I get it and I know a lot of you guys are gonna jump right to your comments keyboards and start typing away frivolously to be like oh you're making the most regretful decision of your life but truthfully I've got a very awesome circle of people that have helped make a lot of everything that I do possible locally they are somewhat of who I say you are who you surround yourself with and they've had big pole buildings with and without radiant floor. And they just said that it's really not worth the added investment. And that's where I made up my mind. Fun fact, Kyle from RR Buildings actually didn't do radiant floors in his personal shop as well after talking with him. He's been a pretty big guiding rudder in all of this. I decided to actually go with the route that he is going. Now, why I'm saying all of that is I needed to update you guys on my final consensus, but also because that's going to save me a lot of money on how we insulate this floor because of the style of heating that we're gonna be doing. It's still a radiant style heat, it's just suspended. So that being said, I had to bring in more stone and I'll have to bring up my grade just a little bit more. We're essentially where we need to be at almost six inches all throughout, but there are some high and low spots that need trimmed down a little bit. And that's what we're about to jump into the skid steer and do here now. You guys have seen me riding the skid steer a whole bunch here, so I'm just gonna get in that thing and run rather than focus on filming. That way we can just get prepped because time is ticking. There's like eight concrete trucks that are scheduled with my name on them. Also, I'm gonna have to dig back out the beautiful trench that I had dug because mother nature eroded all of it. So that way we can run our 200 amp cable to the transformer box to get power over to the building. Now later this week, I'm planning on getting getting down to the shop and starting the high country build. And we're gonna do that somewhat alone because Jake is out in Idaho on his hunting trip. He's been sending me some pictures and videos, trying to post up to Instagram to share his adventures with all of us, but I know cell phone service is a little spotty out there. I am hoping that he has some pretty cool stories for us when he gets back here towards the end of the month. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, boys, this is one of my last reminders to get entered for the Double Dream Diesel Giveaway number 20 giveaway. 15 times entries could make all the difference in signing your name on the title of convict or boost it. Only time will tell. Let out the this isn't a trick. It's a treat. We added a supercharged GLU Wrangler for the last week. And don't scroll past your chance to earn 15 times entries for both of these vehicles before the deadline October 24th. Tap that link below before it's too late. Let them out. Let out the beast. Let out the beast.